guys, since it's Memorial Day, I'm doing this on Monday instead of Sunday, and I'm actually going to kick it off right now just to get things going on NVIDIA from our last week watch list. This actually took off completely. They had a great earnings report, and the $50 billion in semiconductors from the government is going to be a huge, huge push for the stock. So as it started to, it started to bull flag a little bit, and it took off. We actually played this for all-time highs on Friday when the contracts were super cheap, and they paid us a pretty good amount. Um, it was almost, I think it was over 75% return just for holding for a couple hours in that. Um, wasn't even a couple hours. I think it might've been an hour. So if you got, if you caught above this on the watch list the other day for all time high break, you, you got paid, especially with the, the potential gap fill, but the earnings were too good that the video actually took off. And another one that took off was SE. It broke down below the support line, but it came storming right back off of the Latin American news. Um, we actually caught this around 250, 251 mark and wrote it all the way into the end of the day. A lot of people made thousands of dollars just off of swinging a, uh, not even swinging, within a day. We bought the June 4th contracts and we rode them all the way up for the end of the day. And then we actually ended up selling them the next day. Um, so SE was a great move. Square, also another good move. Things started to pull back a little bit at the end of the week because of low volume and the long weekend, but Square actually broke this resistance in 221 all the way to 226. Um, that was a great play. Square was good for the watch list last week and then Dollar General had a nice, had a nice run below the $200 support line that we ended up drawing. Um, they actually tanked pretty far. It, went, it broke right through this $200 support line that I was drawing up last weekend. Um, and it actually hit the 195 mark before they actually had a great earnings report. And then it pushed all the way to 207. So if you got this, I put this on the, the breakdown here. Uh, if you got the $200 breakdown from last week, you made a good amount of money. And then Costco, let's wrap it up from Costco. Try to break this, but their earnings were, they were all right. Their earnings were pretty good, but it had a nice, like I said, a consolidation range. And I was expecting a little bit of a pullback here. And yet again, from that, that gap fill, they didn't even have a gap fill, to be honest. They just kind of just completely tanked off of the, there's a lot of volume here. And the RSI is actually a little bit lower now. I would expect this to consolidate off of this huge run up, like I was saying. The earnings report, these has to be priced in at that point. So with that being said, let's dive right into this week. We got a lot of the earnings. We have Zoom, we have CrowdStrike, we have DocuSign, we have CloudFair, um, a couple others that I want to take a dive into, but let's kick it off right with, um, let's start with, let's do CrowdStrike. See, let's do CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike actually looks pretty good here. It's consolidating, and I can see that this is starting to form a nice cup and handle here on the daily chart. Um, cup and handle here is obviously a nice little dip, and then it'll make a little teapot for the, it'll make a little dip here perfectly for a, in a perfect world for a little cup. It looks like a cup and then it'll break out. And I'm expecting this resistance line to be that breakout point. So 227, I would like to call it, be in some calls, but at, or below this 218 mark, I would like to play some puts here for CrowdStrike. Um, another one that's been running up, probably anticipation of earnings, but if it starts to consolidate below this 218, it could be short-term put contracts to this 214 or 215 mark. And then from there, if it breaks down below that, it might break this cup and handle mark and maybe not be a bullish move. But with earnings this week, I think they're on Wednesday, um, this could break out to above this 230 mark or this 227 mark. So I'm looking for this 227 for calls on a nice breakout all the way to 230 and a beyond, <coughs> excuse me, and then a breakdown below 218 in CrowdStrike. Uh, one that I really like is net it's same it's forming a similar thing a lot of these software earnings that are coming out right now are forming a similar formation of this cup and handle this one has a lot of room this one has a lot of room to go um it has a nice inverse he head and shoulder or an inverse hammer candle here at the end of the day on friday <clears throat> but then again this could uh this could be a good sign so a breakdown below 80 i would probably play some puts or kind of maybe just leave this one alone because it won't be a lot of volatility but above this this 83.50 mark, I would, I really do like this 83.50 to 84 mark to break out to this recent high, not 52 week high or all time high, but above this high. It could almost start to form a little cup and handle here as well. It could start to get to this 88 mark. Um, but anything above this 84 price, I'm probably going to hop in some calls just to see if we can break above this 84 and push a lot higher to test this. Maybe start to form a cup and handle, but I like the 84 break all the way to 88 in Cloudflare, especially with their earnings this week. Now, keep in mind, a lot of these could gap fill and then open higher up earnings and then fill the gap down because future outlook isn't looking the best with rising inflation. So keep that in mind with all these tech stocks. So we have CrowdStrike, we have CloudFair, and I want to take a look at Zoom. Zoom has been pretty flat for a while. I'm expecting them to have similar results as uh, Cisco systems because they have that WebEx uh, system that they have a lot of like 
face-to-face -face Zoom meetings and stuff like that, I feel like are still prevalent, but the future outlook may not be the best compared to the way it was back in the, the pandemic. As you can see, their stock was actually soaring for the longest time. Um, it was sub 100, now it's up to the almost, it almost touched 600 at one point. But now it's kind of consolidating for a while. So I am watching this. Um, this has also the same similar formation here. It looks pretty strong on the TTM squeeze down here, but I do like this, this price um, above this 240 mark. I could see this pushing to 245 and then beyond. That would be my breakout point, the 250 to, or the 350 to 356. Uh, but the, I probably will stay away from this one mostly unless we see some pretty strong side momentum, but these earnings are actually tomorrow after the bell. So uh, this could be a great move for Tuesday. Probably wouldn't recommend swinging into earnings because I'm assuming the IV percentage is going to be crazy, but what you could do is you could day trade the gap filled down because I'm pretty sure um, things are going to, whichever way they open up, they're going to go the reverse spot on Zoom, especially if it opens up higher. I wouldn't be surprised to see a gap fill down. So puts on Tuesday could, or Wednesday could be huge after their earnings report and IV percentage is gone. Um, I kind of want to revisit. Um, I kind of want to revisit Square here. It's had a, it has a nice another an inverse hammer here. We have a nice inverse hammer, and I would expect this to start breaking down below this 218, 2, 219 mark. Um, if it breaks below 219, I wouldn't be surprised if we started to see a little bit lower to 215, 216, and start to consolidate a little bit before a continued higher pace. Um, the reason I say this is because we have a lot of uh, economic numbers that are going to affect the tech sector and affect the market because we do have inflation numbers coming out this week. We have uh, non-farm payroll data coming out this week. We have a, a couple other indicators that are going to be coming out on Thursday and Friday. So just be aware. We have, we have, of course, we have Powell talking on Friday. So that's always a little bit shaky for the market. And one thing I really want to point out to everybody is that VIX, which is the volatility index, is starting to get really, really low on the daily chart. So when this is spiking, the market starts to sell off and the market is pretty hot. The market has been running up quite a bit for quite some time now. So we saw it bottom out a little bit a couple of weeks ago, and now it's just been on a tear. It's looking for that 422 all-time high break, which is very, very possible. But if it starts to break down a little bit, you can see that the VIX, which would track a falling market and a volatility index, has this nice, uh, this hammer candle right here. So this looks as a clearer sign of reversal. So um, just beware, just be aware of this stuff, this, the VIX going crazy. And then they'll watch the market sell off as well. QQQ will get hurt more during this inflation talk, but that's one thing I wanted to point out. So another stock that I really, really want people to get involved in, it's a little bit different this time is the travel industry. It's not a specific stock, but there's things like UAL, DAL for Delta. We got save for spirit airlines. We got AAL for American airlines. We have Airbnb, ABNB, um, we have Trip for TripAdvisor, and then you have the Expedia. All of these numbers and web traffic views are up unbelievably over time, uh, over the last two months. The charts for web traffic sites, meaning more bookings and more viewings, are going to go up through the roof with the, econ with the economy recovering. And um, a lot of sports fans around the world are starting to enter back into the stadiums as TD Garden in Boston is 100%. New York City is about 75%, almost to 100%. Um, and then fans across the NBA are just packing all arenas along with the NHL as well. So you can see people are starting to travel more. You can see people are starting to book more events and go to go to like games and concerts and stuff like that. Things are things are really starting to open up. So I would would not sleep on this on the travel industry and especially the cruise lines, because once the international world uh, wakes up a little bit and everybody starts to get vaccinated and, the, and COVID starts to die out a little bit, if it does, uh, being hopeful and optimistic here. You can see things like NCLH and the cruise lines are $30 versus the $60 price they were back before COVID even hit and they haven't set sale yet. So yes, this is pretty optimistic price to buy in when they don't have revenue coming in right now. But once they do, I wouldn't be shocked at all to start to see this rise. So this could double your money. So long options and all of travel. Um, and then just be careful of the VIX this week because that could be crazy. And then we have the, the net uh, for Cloudfare. We have the CrowdStrike, we have Zoom as well. We also have DocuSign. DocuSign could be a great one to watch as well, but um, not too, not looking too the best on the chart, but if you like to trade DocuSign a little bit safer, software stocks like that, um, just be careful when you're, when you're trading these because swinging them into earnings, IV percentage will absolutely be huge. But if you wait till the day after earnings, the day trading contracts could pay you much, much more. So 
Um, one honorable mention that I wanted to do is I want to revisit Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs is about to break, if possible, this all-time high at 376. I tested it a couple of days ago. Um, let me go back to the daily chart here. It was over a little bit over two weeks ago. I touched this 376 and struggled at the 3, 377 mark, but it's starting to consolidate here and it looks like it's trying to stay above this VWAP. So anything above this 373, this is a much safer play. Uh, 373, I would like to take this 373.50 price and push it to all-time highs. So I'm looking at something similar to NVIDIA last week. They don't have earnings, but um, they could they could face some pretty strong strong buying pressure with inflation rising. So um, pay attention to those numbers, pay attention to federal uh, Powell talking this week. The market could go either way. The, everything is pointing to down, in my opinion, uh, with the VIX being really low with, an, with, a, with a reversal candle on um, its downtrend and the, Q, or the SPY and QQQ sitting pretty high up there, almost near all-time highs. And I also am really cognizant and worried about the Jerome Powell speaking and the inflation numbers and stuff like that. So there's a lot to pay attention to this week, but some of the stocks that I'm watching based on those values are Cloudfare, which is NET. We got CrowdStrike, CRWD with all these cup and handles forming, Zoom. Uh, we got Goldman Sachs. And then I definitely want to pay attention to that square price just to, just to be sure that things aren't going to break down on us completely. In the tech sector, but those are my five this week. I really like a couple more, but these are my top five. I'm going to be watching Square on the downside, and then definitely those earnings prices from the video or not the video, Zoom, CrowdStrike, Cloudflare, and uh, Goldman Sachs for that all-time high break. And then Square, just keep that on, keep that on watch. But this this is going to be a pretty volatile week, and it's a really short week, so the volume probably won't be there, but there could be pretty pretty big movements. So don't be afraid to play puts on the downside as well and be patient with these earnings reports. So it's going to be a pretty big week. Hope you guys can get involved in some of these. I know that's, uh, I know it's kind of an up and down week. We don't really know which way it's going to go, but there is a lot of economic numbers going out. Um, I have a lot of plays set up that I think I'm going to do based off of how these economic numbers come out and how they roll out. So if you want to get involved in these, uh, you can hit the link on the, the next era trading.com and join uh, the channel for some real time updates from me. But Beware of these prices. These are going to move pretty heavily this week and uh, can't really tell you which way up until we know the economic numbers. But once they do, you best believe you'll be making money on some of these movements because the volume and volatility are going to be high. Um, so that's more of an informational watch list. It's a short week, but there is a lot of opportunity out there. So I hope you guys can take advantage of this and uh, we'll, we'll follow up next week.